Welcome to your Ardha Chandrasana Vinyasa practice that will marry two teachings. The first teaching being Shraddha or faithfulness, and the second teaching being the Vijnanamaya Kosha or the wisdom body that's within the five sheath holistic system known as the Koshas. My goal for us on the mat today is to use this practice, this peak posture of Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon as a mirror for the qualities that we need to cultivate in order to connect with our wisdom body, the Vijnana Maya Kosha. So half moon Ardha Chandrasana requires stability beneath us to support the expansion and receptivity that happens in the posture. This is equally true when we are trying to travel inward and connect with the wisdom body. We need to have a nourished and cared for physical body. We need to be able to manage our energy responsibly. We need to be able to skillfully navigate the fluctuations of the mental and emotional body and bring it back to a calm centered state so we can reveal the deeper subtler layers of our intuition and wisdom. So the aim of this practice is to instill within us the faith that we can connect with our intuition and wisdom, that we can receive and experience divine intelligence that guides our decision making, and that we can believe in and trust our gut, the knowingness that lives within each of us, that if we were just able to tap into and connect with and take action alongside with, I have a deep belief that we would live lives that would be much more fulfilling and enjoying, enjoying, enjoyable, much more fulfilling and enjoyable. That is true for me. And maybe that is true for you. So that is what we're working with on the mat together. And I'd love to read an excerpt from Mudras for Healing and Transformation by Joseph and Lillian Lepage before we get started. In their book, where they talk about the wisdom body in the Chitta Mudra, which we'll use towards the end of the practice, they say, Vijnana means higher wisdom. And the Vijnana Maya Kosha is the dimension of our being that allows us to witness, honor, and gradually release limiting beliefs. At the level of the Mano Maya Kosha, the mental emotional body, we learn to welcome our thoughts and feelings without judging. At the level of this body, the wisdom, we recognize that our challenging thoughts and feelings are reflections of deep conditioning in the form of limiting beliefs. By awakening the inner witness, we are able to observe these beliefs without identifying with them so completely. Hallelujah. When we see more clearly, these beliefs lose their power to draw us into their stories and are gradually released. As we deepen our power of witnessing, we align with our true being more completely which is the Anandamaya Kosha, the bliss body, and even beneath that, which is called Atman, our soul. This allows us to live with greater freedom and clarity. I mean, don't you agree? When we release the limiting beliefs and don't attach so greatly to our thoughts and emotions, we're able to live with more clarity and ease. Yes, please. So that's what we'll work towards on our mat together today. I do recommend having two blocks available to support you and having them on either side of the mat because we'll be traveling front to back for some of our postures today. Meeting me now on your back. <sighs> Coming into banana asana. Take the feet over towards the left side of the mat. You can cross the right ankle for added sensation and shift the upper body towards the left corner of the mat. If you'd like, you can clasp the right wrist with your left hand. You can also simply rest right hand and left. Taking a few breaths here. Let's walk everything over towards the right now. Torso shifts, leg shift, left ankle can cross over right. Ah, beautiful. 
a few breaths here. Calming the mental, emotional body, the Manomaya Kosha, so we can be present for this experience, using our breath to enliven the energetic body that informs and influences both the Manomaya Kosha and Anamaya Kosha, the physical body. When these three are nourished, physical, energetic, mental, emotional, it's so much easier to connect with our intuition, our wisdom, to have faith in divine intelligence. Come back through to center. Bring the knees in towards the chest, please. Rock from side to side here. And let's cross the right knee over the left for Supta Gomukhasana. Reach up with your hands to clasp really wherever you can beneath the knees or maybe climbing the fingers down the legs towards the ankle. Maybe you even have the tops of the feet. We do want the back side of the body, shoulders relaxing downward. So notice if the hands went too far and it created or caused you to curl up. This is a passive stretch. We're not forcing anything. We're feeling subtle sensations in the outer hips, which will need to support us in Ardha Chandrasana, half moon, when we arrive there. And let's switch left leg on top. Clasp where you can. If you have more mobility, you can start to pull the legs towards the body. Whew. You'll notice that immediately increases the sensation in the outer hip. Unravel, bring the knees back in towards the chest. Coming into what I always jot down in my sequence notebook as flower core. It looks like this. Palms come down at a 45 degree angle. We inhale the legs also out to about one third or 45 degrees. This is our inhale. We exhale to bring it all in and bring the nose up towards the knees. Come join me. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open to wisdom. Exhale, bring it in, receive it. Inhale to trust your gut. Exhale to take action. Keep moving like this, please. Five more. Opening to that seat of intuition and then drawing it inward to receive it. Last two. Last one. You can start to rock forward and back, coming up to a tabletop position. Wow, this is the first time I have rocked forward and back since my C-section, and it felt strong. What an accomplishment. What a testament to the seasons that we go through on our mat. Inhale to let the belly soften, chest spread, exhale, reverse the movement, tailbone reaches down, head and neck hang heavy. Keep moving like this. Last one.
Left hand stays planted. Inhale the right arm high. Exhale, thread it through. Right shoulder, right ear coming down to the mat, please. Send that left hip back. Maybe you extend the left arm forward. Maybe you wrap the left hand around the body for a bind here. Choose what feels right. Three breaths. Bring the left hand back to its starting position. Firmly press down. Unravel, reach right fingertips high. Place them down. Inhale the left arm high. Thread it through. What's so interesting about that movement I just made was I trusted my gut. I had this intuitive hit during our flower core exercise where I felt like, wow, I'm feeling pretty strong in my core, really stable, really solid. Let me attempt rocking forward and back to an upright posture. I haven't done that in probably two years now. So when I'm referring to our wisdom, that's it. Part of me felt like, no, you should move, rock onto one side, and then make your way up to a seat like you've been doing. And then I had this Small voice say, just try it. And then it happened. Right hand returns to the starting position, firmly press down, unravel, reach the left fingertips high, please, and place them down. Curl the back toes under. Stabilize the arms here. Wrap the abdomen towards the midline, and then lift the knees off the earth plane. Hover here, really hover. The knees like to lift higher and higher and higher. Really hover. Three breaths. Soften the knees. Again, inhale. Cow, exhale, cat. Extend the right leg back. Reach the left arm forward on inhale, lift your limbs. Hold here three breaths. Ardha Chandrasana is very similar to this. Cultivating concentration here. And now inhale as you lengthen from fingertips to toes. Exhale, elbow to knee. Two more. Reach up, maybe reach back as you bend the back knee for the ankle or the top of the foot here. Maybe you can press the foot into the hand and let that go. Inhale for cat, please. Cow, excuse me. Exhale, push the earth plane away. Come into neutral tabletop, curl the toes under, strengthen the whole body as you hover the knees here. Three breaths. Soften the knees down, extend the left leg behind you as you reach the right arm in front of you. Gaze somewhere, find a point of focus and lift your limbs. Three breaths, roll that left hip down, push the mat away. Extend from fingertips to toes, two more breaths. It requires courage, bravery and strength to trust our gut. Often it's such a difficult process. And it is just that, a process, right? Inhale, exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, open. Exhale, elbow towards knee. Inhale, open. Last time, exhale, elbow towards knee. Inhale, open. 
bend the back knee, reach back with the right hand, maybe push hand, foot into hand to lift the back leg higher and let that go. Inhale for cow. Reach the sternum forward. Exhale, cat. Untuck the toes and hover the knees again. Three breaths. Cultivating the strength to trust our intuition, to connect with our wisdom. Soften the knees, take them wide, balasana, child's pose. Rest here for a moment. Rise back up. Extend the right leg. Extend the left hand. Lift the limbs. Listen carefully. This is our inhale breath. On an exhale, left arm will come into a goal pose shape. Right leg will come into a fire hydrant pose. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Last one. Extend long, set everything down, other side. Left leg reaches back, right arm forward, inhale, lift. Exhale, goal post, fire hydrant. Inhale. Exhale. Last time. Inhale. Set everything down, meet me in downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Man, those fire hydrants, I'm not going to lie, they suck. <sighs> Three more breaths here. Enjoy any shape you want to make here in Adho Mukha Svanasana. Last two. Last one. Inhale to gaze forward. Walk yourself to the top of the mat. Ragdoll hang for a moment. I can trust my gut. I can trust my gut. Let's work with that affirmation for a bit. Roll the body up. Stack the vertebra. I can trust my gut. Beautiful. Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, sweep the arms high, please. Exhale, fold through the midline. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, your way to down dog. You can lower to the belly. You can go straight to downward dog, cobra pose, or upward facing dog. We all meet in downward dog, soften the knees down, listen carefully, right, left leg, excuse me. <laughs> We're gonna bring the right knee forward, right hand forward, extend the left leg back for a side plank variation. Notice how my right foot pivoted towards the edge of the mat. Reach the left arm high, start making some circles with the left hand here. Reach the left arm high once again. Teepee up onto the right fingertips. Walk them closer to the body. Use the strength of your abdomen to pull all the way up. Slide the left hand down. Reach the right arm high. Windmill back down again. Right fingertips connect. Left arm sweeps overhead. Left arm reaches up. Slide the left arm down again. Last time. and hold here in gate pose. Reaching the right fingertips overhead. Windmill the hands down, meet me in plank. Hold here, whole breath. 
And now soften the left knee down. Left arm comes in front of the face. Open the body to the side of the mat. The right leg extends long behind you. Reach the right arm high. Create those arm circles again. Reach the right arm high. Teepee up onto the left fingertips. Walk them towards the body. Use the strength of the abdomen to lift upright. Slide right hand down the right leg. Reach the left arm overhead. Windmill back down again. Continue with this movement. Two more repetitions. Moving steadily. Stability is our priority. So we can open to receptivity. Windmill the hands down. Meet me in plank pose. Your choice. You can lower down to the belly. Chaturanga or shift straight back to downward dog. Pausing here. Three breaths. Three breaths and downward dog. Last breath. Inhale to gaze forward. Exhale your way to the top of the mat. You can step, you can walk, you can hop. Lift up halfway. Each time make a decision with discernment, guiding your actions and fold. Inhale, root to rise. Hands come down through prayer. Sweep the arms high. Exhale, fold through the midline. Lift up halfway. Step the right foot back, soften the knee down, rise up, low lunge. Frame the front foot, step back, downward dog. You can hold here or flow. Choose what you need, please. Inhale the right leg high. Bend the knee, open the hip. Another breath here. Square the pelvis, please. Step the right foot through. You're coming into runner's lunge. Left hand stays down, right arm high, open arm twist. Breathe here. Return to a calm, centered state. Return to I can trust my gut. Last breath. Transition to Vashistasana side plank. You can soften the left knee, sweep the right leg back. You can also come to the pinky edge side of the left foot and stack the right foot atop of it. Three breaths, whatever you choose. Push the earth plane away, lift the hips, reach the right fingertips high, last breath. Exhale, hands down. Downward facing dog. Inhale to gaze forward. Your way top of the mat. Lift up halfway, please. Arrive. Thank yourself for being here, communing with your wisdom body. Fold. Root to rise. Hands down through prayer. Sweep those arms high. Press down through the soles of the feet. Tap into stability, reach towards receptivity, and fold through the midline. Lift up halfway. Step the left foot back. Soften the knee down. Rise up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, frame the front foot. Step back, downward dog. Choose if you want to stay here or hinge forward to plank and move through a flow. Once you arrive in downward dog, sweep the left leg high, bend the knee, open the hip. Enjoy a moment. Strengthening our faith in ourselves that we can trust our gut. Reach the left leg high, sweep it through. Runner's lunge. Right hand stays down this time, left arm reaches high.
Transition into Vashistasana. Now you choose knee coming down or rotating onto the edge of the right foot, stacking the feet atop. One another three breaths here. Trust your gut. Believe in your instinct. You are wise. You can make discerning decisions. Last breath. Hands come to plank, shift back, downward dog. Soften the knees, child's pose, please. Great time for water. Last centering breath. Meet me in downward dog. This is where I'd love for you to have a block on either end of the mat to support you. If you don't, take a moment, situate yourself. Okay, inhale, sweep the right leg high. We're working our way towards Ardha Chandrasana, knee towards nose. Plant the right foot, rise up, Virabhadrasana two. Have the block right nearby, your right foot, please. Virabhadrasana two, heel to arch alignment, knee tractioning towards pinky edge toe, torso over the pelvis. Radiate through all 10 fingertips. On an inhale, straighten the front leg, palms reach. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Flip the front palm, reverse that warrior, keep that bend in the knee as you reach back through the right fingertips, reach back towards your intuition, your divine intelligence, straighten the front leg, heel toe the back foot in just a bit for Trikonasana. Inhale again, reach. Exhale, reach forward as you shift the hips. When you feel like, ah, oh, I'm at my edge, right hand to the shin or to a block, please. Push away as you rotate to the chest open, left fingertips high, both legs firm, both legs providing that stability, bottom rib cage wrapping underneath, top rib cage opening towards the ceiling. I can trust my gut. I have faith in my ability to make discerning decisions and take action based on that last breath. Bend that front knee, bring the forearm to rest atop the thigh. You can also keep the hand on the block here or even the floor for side angle pose. Sweep the left arm overhead, pinky edge towards the mat, or maybe you wrap the left hand underneath you for a bind. Start to gaze down. We're coming into half moon now. I like to place my block on the outside of my right foot. Bend the back knee as you straighten the front leg to hop in a bit, okay? And then use this block as your support system, as your stability, as you lift up, lifting the left leg behind you, stacking the hip points atop one another, both legs solid. Reach the tailbone towards the back heel that's lifted. Shoulder stacking atop one another, maybe taking the gaze upwards, maybe reaching the left fingertips high towards the sky. Take three more breaths. Opportunity to bend the back leg, coming into Chopasana. We all bend the right knee, coming back into warrior two, please. Adjust, take a moment. <sighs> Position the feet now to face the side of the mat for goddess pose, toes out, heels in. Settle down, goddess arms. 
Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale, return to the posture. Inhale. Exhale. Last time. Straighten the legs, bring the hands to the hips, pivot the feet so that the pinky edge is parallel with the front and back of the mat. Lift the sternum high for an inhale. Exhale, fold. Prasarita Padottanasana. If the legs are straight, the kneecaps are lifting, the thighs are engaged. You can also keep the legs bent. Opportunity for Skandasana here. Opportunity for Shirshasana, headstand. You're in headstand, making your way down again. Let's all meet, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, hands to hips, strongly return to stand. Warrior two, back of the mat. Have your block nearby, please. Align from heel to the back arch, knee towards pinky edge toe. Radiate through all 10 fingertips and across the collarbone. Gaze out towards your wisdom. Inhale, straighten the front leg, palm stretch overhead, exhale, again. Last time. Flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. Begin to straighten the front leg, heel toe the back foot in for Trikonasana. Again, inhale, reach skyward. Exhale as you shift the hips back, reach the arms forward, torso reaches, and the body rotates downward. Left fingertips to a shin or the block, maybe the floor. Shoulders stacking, hip points stacking. Notice how we want to create the same movement in Ardha Chandrasana. Hip stacking, shoulders stacking, length through the sides of the waist, legs firm. Bend that front knee, side angle pose. Pinky finger rotating downward, armpit rotating upward. Left hip reaching back. And now gaze down. Let's straighten the front leg so we can hop the back leg in, coming into Ardha Chandrasana. Block on the outside of the pinky foot and slowly lift off. Find that drishti point. Stabilize the standing leg first as you rotate the hip points open. Shoulders stack. Reach the hands high. Last three breaths, opportunity for Chopasana. Let that go, we meet back in warrior two. Beautiful, hands to hips, pivot back through to the center. Again, inhale, lift the sternum. Exhale, hinge at the hips as you fold, reach the hip creases back. Hang here. Invitation to bend the knees and really allow the spine to extend. Find your block. Get it ready to sit atop of. 
as you heel toe the feet together and bring your bottom to rest here. Supported Malasana Yogi Squat. Elbows to the interior of the knees, hands press firmly together, lift up here. Slowing down. Appreciating whatever progress you just made with the posture, knowing you'll always have another opportunity as a yoga student. It's a lifelong practice. Knowing that the shapes will change, but the intent is the same, right? I was having a flashback of a photo from when I just finished yoga teacher training in Chopasana. I was in black leggings and a red top, and that variation looked wildly different than the one I just did. Wildly different. Different season of life, right? Being okay with the ebbs and the flows and staying seated with our intuition and knowing what's best at every turn to the best of our ability, yeah? <laughs> Last breath here. Now find that other block if you have two coming into dangler pose. Blocks on the tallest setting. And let the forearms rest here. Head and neck hang heavy. Hmm. Take the left block, place it on the lowest setting right beneath the face. Bring the left hands to connect with that block. Bend the left knee, straighten the right leg, twist open towards the right, reach the right arm high. And let's switch right hand down, right leg bends, left leg straightens, open to the left side. and release come back down remove the props off to the side if you'd like one more vinyasa go for it otherwise you'll meet me all the way onto your belly all the way onto the belly once you get there extend the arms straight out in front of you pinky side down forehead down on an inhale lift the right arm and the left leg Lower down, right leg, left arm, lower down, right arm, left leg, lower down, same, same, One more time each side. Stack both hands, rest the forehead there, wiggle the hips, feel free to bend the knees and windshield wiper the legs. Roll over onto your back, please. Preparing for bridge pose. Arms will reach overhead on the inhale as you lift the hips. We'll move dynamically to begin with. Inhale, press firmly into the feet, lift the hips. Arms, actually pause. If you've got a block, let's place it there. Added stability. Inhale, lift the hips. Squeeze that block, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, lower down. Inhale. Exhale. Three more.
On this last one, lift the hips, option to tuck the shoulders underneath, clasp the hands for traditional bridge pose, press the edge of the arms into the mat, the fist package to lift the hips higher, keep hugging the block with the legs, lift the chin away from the chest, two more breaths. And lower down. Place the block underneath the sacrum for a restorative bridge. Integrating the movement, integrating the message from today's practice. Having faith in our ability to connect with and listen to and believe in our intuition. Being open to its wisdom. What are you hearing? What are you feeling? In your heart of hearts, what are you thinking and feeling right now? What messages of wisdom are you connecting with? It's okay if nothing's coming up in this very moment. You can repeat this practice. Press into the soles of the feet, lift the hips. Let the knees fall over to the left, right arm reaches out, supine twist. Legs come back through to center, shift over to the right with the knees, arm reaches out to the left. Legs come back through to center. Hug the knees into the chest. Make any final movements you need, any final postures that will help you feel even more complete. And once you arrive at that sense of completeness, bring yourself into Shavasana, our final resting asana posture. You can add any props that you may need. We'll be here for a full five minutes. Allow yourself to get as comfortable as possible here.
every bit of the body that's connecting with the earth plane. Know that you are held and supported. Know that you can relax and release. Allow the calmness of your energy to keep the mind and the emotions in a clear, centered state so that as we rest here, as we integrate, we can connect with our wisdom. We can have faith and belief in our intuition. Enjoying this moment of solitude. Enjoying this moment of rest. truth is you probably don't need more motivation you already know what to do you already know what you want you already know what you're meant for you already know who you are you would choose these things without hesitation if not for the wounds the conditioning and the limiting beliefs that prevent you from seeing clearly You would do what you were meant to without prompt if only you knew you were allowed to. That to be your own self was not to expose yourself to more hurt, but rather denying your truth is the most painful existence of all. The truth is that you probably don't need more motivation. You need more healing. You are not seeking a light outside of you, but to remove the blocks that are preventing you from seeing the one already radiating within. Start to deepen your breath and radiate that light outwards into every nook and cranny of your existence through all of the layers of the body. When you're ready, make small movements, fingertips, toes, ankles, and wrists. 
And when you're ready, reach the arms overhead. Extend long from fingertips to toes. Meet me in an upright seated posture. We'll close with OM. Hands into prayer once you arrive here. Borders of the thumb connect with the sternum. Spread through the collarbone. Inhale to prepare. Shanti, 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 Om, peace, peace, peace. May we all experience peace as we connect to and enliven and begin to trust and have faith in our intuition, in our own wisdom. Gradually open the eyes, release the hands, lift the gaze. Mm. I really encourage you to turn to a journal, a notebook, a loose piece of paper, whatever is nearby, the notes app in your phone, and stream of consciousness with your inner witness guiding you what is coming up around this prompt of trusting your gut, believing in your intuition, having faith in your wisdom. What's coming up for you? Write it down immediately without judgment, okay? I'm going to do that as soon as I hit that stop recording button. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for learning about your wisdom body, the Vigyanata Maya Kosha and cultivating Shraddha so that you can live with intuition and discernment guiding your actions. Mm, I'll meet you back here so we can keep practicing yoga holistically together.